Hello there. My name is Joe Bell, and I'm so glad that you're able to join with me as we deal with another in our series of Coping in a Crisis. This message is recorded from the chapel at Silver Mine Retirement Village, which is in the suburb of Nurduk, down in Cape Town. And I'm delighted that you're able to be with me. It's the If it's your first time, a very special welcome. And if you've been watching every week, thank you so much. And also thank you for the responses. Our little team that put this all together are very appreciative of every comment and thanks that you send us. We're going to deal today with the subject of the cry of an anxious heart. In other words, we want to deal with the subject of anxiety. And our basis will be from Psalm 55. You remember it was written by David. And we're going to look at how he struggled with the subject and the problem of anxiety. Years ago, there was a newspaper and magazine counsellor by the name of Anne Landers. People used to write in and ask her to help them with their problems and their difficulties and their pitfalls. And it's estimated that about 10,000 people wrote in every month. And she tried to answer as many questions as possible. And one day somebody asked her if there was one problem that surfaced more than any other. And her response was anxiety. And she went on to say that people are anxious of life itself. A Christian counselor in America wrote a little while ago that he said in his country that anxiety had reached epidemic proportions. And all around us today, there are men and women, young and old, who are battling with apprehension, unease, worry, distress and anxiety. And I think to compound the problem, we're suffering with the effects of lockdown, the depressing news bulletins, the frightening predictions, the staggering statistics, and of course the fake news that seems to be abounding. And it's almost as if there is a dark cloud descending upon us, causing us to worry, to give way to disquiet, to nervousness, and to anxiety. And I would like to look today at this Psalm, Psalm 55, and see what were the causes of David's anxiety and, of course, what was the cure. And first of all, we'll notice there that in the causes of his anxiety, David gave way to fear. It's quite amazing, isn't it, that he was a man who suffered with anxiety at all. You would never expect him to. As a young man, he defeated a giant in battle. Later on, he built a mighty empire. He united a divided nation. He was a prolific writer. And he could claim that the Lord was his shepherd. And of course, when you go to the New Testament, when God makes reference to David, he says he's a man after my own heart. But here we find David, of all people, giving way to anxiety. Listen to what he wrote in his psalm in verses 3, 4 and 5. He said, my thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling have beset me, and horror has overwhelmed me. That's the cry 
of an anxious heart? Well, let's look at the causes that brought about anxiety in the heart of this man. As you read the psalm, you'll notice that his mind was in a turmoil. He felt as if death were hanging over him like a sword. He was at the point of collapse and his emotions spilled over into fear and his fear into anxiety. And the only answer initially he thought was, listen to what he said, Oh, that I had wings of a dove. I would fly away. David thought that the answer to anxiety was to run away, to fly away, to get away, to move away, to get out of the way. Beloved, it's a good reminder to us that when we've got to make important decisions and critical ones, that we don't do so when we're experiencing distress and tension and pressure. But David's fear, strangely enough, was the fear of death. You remember it was David who wrote, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And now he says that the terrors of death assail him. In other words, it was death that was troubling him. It was death that harassed him, that disturbed him, that tortured him. And he's in a position where he gives way to anxiety. Have you noticed this COVID-19, what it has done? It has thrust death and dying onto the center of the stage. It reveals our fragility. The global crisis is teaching us how weak we are as human beings. We all love to be in control, don't we? Captain of our destiny, masters of our fate. But what do we find? We're using masks, disinfectant sprays, taking cover in seclusion, distancing ourselves from others and it reminds us just how very frail we are and when fear grips our minds and our hearts and our thoughts and our emotions anxiety takes over the second problem that david had was not only the fear and the fear of death but betrayal. David had a wonderful friend for a while. Ahithophel was his name. He was one of David's advisors. He was a close comrade. He was a companion of long standing, a fellow believer. They used to worship together, sing together, pray together, and join together in temple, a praise of Almighty God. They were together. And then something happened. Ahithophel betrayed David. The trust was broken. The companionship was severed. I might remind you that betrayal is not always from outsiders, but sometimes from friends. And here was a friend of David who exercised deliberate deception, calculated hypocrisy, planned deceitfulness. You know, if David was on the battlefield, he says he could cope with it. But he says, how can he cope when a trusted friend has betrayed him. Towards the end of last year, a book was published, written by Dr. Sheila Graham Smith. The title of the book is Tell the Truth About Adultery. And Dr. Smith tells her story in the book. And she tells how her husband 
who they were married for 20 years. He was the pastor of the local church. And she tells her once a week, he used to take her for a dinner date. That was what it was called. Great idea. And they went out one night for a dinner. And in the course of the meal, her husband turned to her and he said he wanted a divorce. He had found someone else. And she turned to him and she said, but surely you don't want to go that route. And very nonchalantly, he said, I'm going. And she tried to bring about a reconciliation. He would have nothing of it. And then she wrote of the agony and the anguish that she suffered. She went on to say that when she heard those words and the effects of it, there came about grief, sadness, shock and misery. Now, betrayal doesn't always happen in a home. Sometimes in a business environment, sometimes in the family, sometimes in a friendship, even in a church. And maybe I'm just speaking to somebody and you know all about betrayal. You've been betrayed and you've felt the terrible hurt and the agony of it. You have been left shattered. In fact, you've never recovered. And the pain lives on with you in your mind and heart. And that was David's problem. And the causes of fear and betrayal led him to give way to a heart that was filled with anxiety. And we read of the cry of an anxious heart. But what was the cure? You know, right at the end of the psalm, Psalm 55 and verse 22, David gives us one of the greatest promises in the whole of the Bible. Listen to what he wrote. He said, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. What's wonderful about that promise is it's mentioned again in the New Testament. And this time it was written by Peter. You remember Peter, the apostle of the Lord Jesus? He knew all about fear. He knew all about betrayal. And he wrote these words, cast all your anxiety on Christ because he cares for you. And the word that he uses for anxiety is also the word that we have for distraction. Have you noticed what anxiety does? It distracts you. It distracts you when it comes to your judgment. It distracts you with your priorities. It distracts you with your quality of life. It distracts you with your motivation. It also distracts you spiritually. You stop reading the Bible because you're distracted. You stop praying because you're distracted. You stop walking with Jesus because you're distracted. And both men tell us that when there is this anxiety and this cry of pain and hardship, what ought we to do? And maybe there's a fear in your heart or a betrayal or whatever it may be. Both men tell us that the answer is to cast all your cares, all your anxieties, all your distractions on Christ, on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will sustain you. He will keep you. He will support you. He will come alongside of you. Once a year in Times Square in New York City, 
they have an occasion that they call Good Riddance Day. It's when they put bins out in the square and they invite people to bring all those objects and letters and emails and messages and cards that have brought about bad memories for them during the year and have caused them great difficulties. And they invite them to throw those messages into the bins. And the bins are taken away and the contents destroyed. And the motivation on Good Riddance Day is to get away and get rid of of all of those things. Beloved, it may be that as you listen today, there is in your life pain and anguish and anxiety and you really don't know what to do. Then why not make today or maybe in the next few days a good riddance day? Do you know what I'd like to suggest? That you write a letter. Get aside on your own for a while and write a letter. And the first thing you need to do is address it to Jesus and tell him about all those difficulties. In the letter, cast all the things that you need to be done in your life so that you can Get rid of the pain and the heartache and put it on the letter. And then take the letter after having written it, read it to Jesus, tell him about it, pour out your heart before him and then you go and destroy it and experience a good riddance day and allow him to embrace you, to support you, to protect you, to comfort you. And as both David and Peter write, to change your life so that it may not be a cry of an anxious heart, but your life will be changed. The future will have a new look. And there will be in your soul a peaceful, contented spirit. Would you do that today? Write Jesus a letter. Share it with him. Throw the letter away. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you know those of us who are battling with anxiety, with fears, even fears of death, fears of the future, fears that are putting a stranglehold on our thinking, on our sleeping, on our behaviour. And we thank you that you have invited us to cast all of those things upon you. And we want to do so even now and in the days that come ahead, lie ahead. Help us and meet with us and then sustain us. Because we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen. I hope you're going to write that letter. I really do. And just allow the Lord to do something very wonderful in your life. Also to suggest to you, if in some way this message has touched a chord in your heart or there's somebody out there that you know needs a word from the Lord, won't you share it with them so that the message may go out far and wide, not only here but even overseas. And then next week we take up a further message on coping in a, crisis, in a crisis, and the subject will be worry, and it is worthless. Hope I'm going to see you. God bless you and be with you. 
And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, to strengthen you and to settle you in the faith. God bless you.